So introduce yourself. I'm Benedict Andrews. And where are you from? I'm from Australia. I now live in Iceland. So I guess that makes me ice Australian. <laughs> when did you become interested in making films? Ooh, I, I wanted to make a film for a very long time. I've been making theatre for about 20 years. And all that time I was kind of uh, thinking about making filmmaking. Making film. And who inspired you growing up? Um, I guess I, I come, the town I'm from, the Adelaide, the Adelaide has a festival called the Adelaide Festival and I was really fortunate enough to see really radical theatre from all around the world, like to see Japanese Bhutto dancers hanging upside down or to see a Chekhov from, from Georgia or from Lithuania, so I, I guess the access to that type of theatre was really inspiring. So you started out through directing theatre. How did all, that all come about? Um, well, it's a really long story. <laughs> um, I guess I was... I, for a while I wanted to be an actor, but that kind of went away. <laughs> um, and when I was about 15 or 16, I had a very inspirational teacher um, I changed schools and I had a very inspirational teacher and he introduced us to to the works of uh, like radical 20th century literature like Beckett and UNESCO and treated us as if we would really understand that and um, and that that really lit the fuse for me and I kind of knew from that point that I, I, I wanted to make theatre. So when did you, I guess that's when you decided that that's what you wanted to do? Yeah. Yeah. That happened then. I, I remember one day when I changed schools, this this teacher, Michael Burris for Plumet, he had a room, a black room in, in what had been a nunnery in the school. And up, so I, he's teaching plays about the death of God. <laughs> I, I saw the girls in the year above me do, do Waiting for God, oh, and you know, we're doing the Caretaker by Pinter, and all these works that are essentially about, about the absurdity of human existence and the death of God in the room in a nunnery. And I remember I went up there on one of the first days there, he was very famous in the school, people really loved him, and he was a really inspirational teacher. And I remember on the, one of my first days there, he said, you know, what do you, what do you want to do when you, when you leave school? And my previous school, they didn't take theatre really seriously at all. And I'd said, oh, I think I might be a lawyer, but I'd like to do theatre on the side. And he said, right, that very first moment, you don't do it on the side. It's all, it's all or nothing. And that, that indeed has been. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Una, which is your debut film, is based on the play Blackbird by David Harrower. What was it like to move out of theatre into film, yet adapting a play? Yeah, I directed the play at, in German at the Schaubühne Theatre in Berlin in 2005. It was one of the first productions of the play in the world. So I knew the play inside out. Um, but the play, the play is two people in a closed room. Um, so in the theatre, I guess, the audience are trapped in the same room with them. Actually, in the theatre, there's like a contract. You have just an invisible boundary, usually through a fourth wall, but it can be all sorts of ways, but you have an invisible boundary, and there's a contract that you say, on one side of that invisible boundary <laughs> is one reality, and on the other side are people looking into that. But you're breathing the same air as those people. And usually, in their space, calamitous things are happening. <laughs> on the other side of that invisible boundary, calamitous things are happening, and things that, in... In, in a, would be rip, rip, would rip our lives apart or send us to the madhouse if we, we had ex exposure to them. And I think the theatre is the kind of place where we can go to safely experience these type of crisis and people push to the limits. And Blackbird is a play that does that. The first word of the play is a shock. Um, the female character Una tracks this man down who she hasn't seen for f 15 years and they reopen the past. Uh, I guess one of the tricks of making a film for the first time as a theatre director was how to get out of that closed room of the theatre. <laughs> so it's an interesting exercise for that. Uh, how do you draw on everything that in the play um, that, is, that is, is so volatile and so, so compact, 
But how do you also get beyond language? In theatre, it's it comes from rhetoric, it comes from argument. The play is like a verbal boxing match. Language and speech utterance is still very important in the film, and these two people can only say what they say to each other. That's their special relationship. They can't talk to about to family, to psychiatrists, to, to other people. They've only got each other. And I guess that was thing is how, how do we set them moving through the world how do so the, the kind of setting of the singular room be kind of a kind of labyrinth in which the two characters are stalking and chasing each other but another big interest for me was the question of memory this in this play the in the play the her arrival in his workplace opens the floodgates to the past and memories start to, re, to resurface and trigger and I think cinema is kind of the space par excellence to in, to investigate that um, to investigate the the human experience of time and an emotional experience of time. In the theatre, when they describe what happens in the past, each audience member creates a little film on the screen of their imagination triggered by the words and the poetry of, of the play. We had to find a way to visually tell that story, but also to explore how um, all of us carry these screens of memory inside us, and the film is, the film is a way to... to be able to kind of interweave the past and the past and the present and f find a kind of dynamic dialogue between the past and the present. So that was one way to get out of the room of the theater after all the time I spent there. So what drew you to this project? I loved the play when I directed it. It had really got under, got under my skin. I remained, a, rem, remained fascinated with it. And I thought that there was extremely, um, it was extremely rich material for film. There's one, two key things. The idea of time that we were talking about that I was really curious about um, how to explore this experience of time in the cinema and how to explore, explore where, 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 where memory interrupts the present. But also this idea of the encounter, which is a very cinematic idea. And these two people who haven't seen each other after, after 15 years. Their encounter is very special. Their history, their, 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 their history and the emotional state that, that Una finds herself in means that they, they, and especially she really, exists on a kind of borderline, a kind of fracture line, both in, in time, between the past and the present, but between emotions and states of being that should remain separate. Desire and guilt have become mixed up in her, and abuse and love have become become you know, terribly intertwined and she's searching for an answer and a way to separate the, the, those things and therefore she stalks him down. So I was fascinated with the moral questions that, 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 that opens up, the, com the conversation that it sets going about about abuse and survival of that and, and redemption, but even more fundamentally about the question of, of, of memory and desire and time. The play is... Not black and white, and I was interested in how, how 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 the film would enter into this borderline state and this this grey area, um, and yeah, it's just it's very rich material and great great roles for two actors. And were you looking to draw any conclusions or leave that completely up to the spectator? I wanted the film to continue in the, the imagination of the audience afterwards in their, and in, in their discussions in, in the bar and in the car on the way home. And, and I really wanted it to... You know, the film is about scar tissue in someone's life that, she, that she, she can't get rid of after 15 years. Maybe the course of, over the course of the film she takes the first step towards that. But I wanted the film to do a similar thing in the audience, to, the, to the audience. I wanted it to stay, to stay with them and to, to, to haunt them. And if you give two easy answers, that, that, that would stop. And it would actually betray her emotional situation and what she's been through if we, if we were to kind of, you know, sew a nice button on it. So you have a great cast with fantastic performances. How did that all come together? The, when I knew that I was going to do a film of, of Blackbird, as, as it was called when we shot it, um, my first thought for the role, role of Una was, was Rooney Mara. I couldn't think of anyone else for it. Um, I knew that the role needed somebody with who was really to, prepared to put a, everything on the line and who would be able to mix kind of 
exist in this borderline state that we were talking about and mix incredible vulnerability with real f with real strength and determination and um, Rooney as an actress I admired and o o over many performances but precisely, precisely she has has these qualities in every performances of, of performance of hers that I've seen she she puts herself on the line and she exposes her her, her her raw nerves and is just completely truthful and authentic actress and uh, it was a real thrill to discover that she had a connection with the play. She'd seen Blackbird. She would loved it. I think she'd also been curious. She's, she's great instincts, right, as an actress, like on, on screen. But she also has great instincts about the choices she, she makes in the projects she wanted to be involved in. And I think she had the instinct that this was a, a good role for her. The photography in the film is quite beautiful. How did it feel to work in a new medium? I love photography and I love taking photographs. Uh, my theater, I like to make deep space in the theater. I tend to mostly only have one frame in the theater, although that's not always true. There's ways you can mess with that. But I like to make strong, uh, visceral and poetic pictures um, in the theater. But I loved working with the cameraman, DP, Timios Bakatakis, uh, I love the challenge of creating reality with, with, within that frame and to make those deep, deep, sometimes metaphorical spaces and to find a, the beauty of photography for the screen. I also loved as a director who likes to push actors to go to <laughs> extreme, extreme places, I love that special intimacy of the camera where a quiver of a lip or the flicker, flicker of an eye can, can, can say so much. What were the biggest differences and similarities between working in film versus theatre? Um, the two biggest differences for me are that everything only exists through, through, through the frame and that you as a director could control that and play that through, through, edit, through editing. So the tension between those two pro those two processes I found really exciting. In the theatre, we're editing always as we go, you know, you try a lot of things in the rehearsal room, you try one thing, you throw it away, it's quite an organic process to sort of maybe at the last moment in front of the audience before the premiere, it kind of congeals <laughs> for, for a moment, but even that is always shifting during, during, the, during the performances. It's very organic and it's alive. I learned that film is alive, it's actually alive even once it's fixed. If you watch an Antonioni film from the 50s, it actually changes through your life as you keep watching it, even though, even though it's fixed. But for me, that's a really big fascination with making film, is that you, you fix a moment for eternity. Um, and, yeah, the challenge of, play, the, of, 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 of playing with time, and at, in terms of process, learning about the really... The, different ways that a film will change over the course of production from the script phase to the the kind of you know mad madness and freefall of, 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 of the of the shoot through then to the kind of meditation of the edit and uh, experimenting at each step of that phase. Is there anything you can say about your upcoming Gene Seberg project? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. It's not really even official. I, I, I've been sort of saying I can't talk about it. I understand there must be that name on IMDb, IMDb or IMDb. something IMDb. now. But it's a really exciting project with great people. There's an amazing cast. And very, very soon I hope we can talk more about it because I hope to be shooting it in this city in the spring of next year. Oh, cool. Are you still continuing with theatre projects as well? Yes, I am. <clears throat> theatre, in a way, will always be my home. It will be somewhere I return to. Um... And I think you kind of, oh, I, I, I want to m make more film. I'm really, it's, it's kind of, I came to it relatively late. You know, I've been making theatre for 20 years. I mean, by mid 40s, I, I, and now that I've started, I, <laughs> I want to keep doing it. But theatre is somewhere I always return to. In a way, it's a kind of, it's sort of a, a great gymnasium to return to. You've got a great space to play. Uh, to play around, to work with actors. So I'll, I'll always keep doing that. My production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, which with, with Sienna Miller and Jack O'Connell, just closed last weekend in London. So I think I've done three operas in a play since the film, but I'm certainly I'm checking back my theatre and opera schedule in order to kind of have the space for films to come into being. Are there directors that you look up to that work in both spaces? Yeah, there's, there's, there's several. Um, 
but a, a very special example for me would be Bergman, um, in that he remained a great man of the theatre throughout his throughout his life, and that you can see the way that those two those two practices and those two disciplines interweaved in his life. And for me, he's a kind of role model in that. Some directors who I love, like Vassbinder, Vassbinder began in the theatre, and Pasolini began in the theatre, but it. it tended to be that once they began making cinema that became everything and I understand I understand that it's very it's very addictive and it has a very specific s schedule Bergman found a way to keep intertwining those those practices and you could feel that the work he's doing with his his actors in the theater and the great texts that he's working on are a kind of um, is, is a kind of spiritual home for him and yet every time he comes across to to to, to cinema, he's always innovating. He's always he's 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 bringing across that 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 framework and that 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 meat and that quest from his 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 theatre work and that that kind of exceptional inquiry into being human <laughs> that the theatre allows. He's bringing that across into to, to to cinema, and I believe each film he's looking to innovate. Um, and discover new languages in cinema, and I mean that's a pretty high role model to have. But he, he, yeah. So what's next for you? Next for me is the the, the project I can't talk about. I hope. Um, yeah, I've come off the back of um, earlier this year the the, the Tennessee Williams um, on the West End in London and a wonderful opera of Medea by the German composer Arabert Reimann in Berlin, and I have. I think for the first time in my adult life, <laughs> a kind of clear diary in terms of theatre and opera so that I can, I, I can focus in on this, this next movie. Excellent. Thank you.